And we're live. Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. So we're live and it's all working and Gary's very happy. Um, if you're in the chat, if you're watching this live and you're in the chat, you can say hi or ask any questions and Gary will either try and answer them or if he doesn't know, he might throw them over to me. So welcome. We're getting into that festive season, so it's time for a little bit of sparkle. I'm going to be using the Cotman Metallic Pocket, I think it's Pocket Set. I was going to say travel, but I think it's just Pocket Set. So these have eight colours, and as with any new set you get, or any set, it's always worth doing a colour swatch. Not only to see how they work um, on the materials you're going to be using them on, but just to see the colours. And I've got them in the same order they're sat out, set out in the pan because some colours look very similar next to each other. So I do this pretty much with anything, any new colour. And it just shows you how it works on white. I don't know if you can see the shimmer there, Gary. Uh, a little bit. And obviously on the darkest I have, which is the black watercolour, which I'm loving. And you may see this feature a few more times in the next few weeks. And you can see there the shimmer. But comparing them, you can see here colours are very close where they're different on the white. And it is really a useful activity. I quite like doing them. Then I have loads of these all stored up and I can bring them out when I'm using that set or that colour and it just helps me to negotiate with what I'm doing. So I'm going to put that up there because it's in the same order as on the pan and I can then see how it's going to work on this black paper. So like I say, coming up to that festive season, time for a bit of shimmer. And I'm going to start off with creating three candles. I've printed off this image from uh, Pixabay, so copyright free. And I'm not saying I'm going to do it all, and obviously these colours are not relevant because I'm going to use the colours in the set. So I've also printed off a black and white, which helps me distinguish between tonal values. But it's reference, that's the point of pictures a lot of the time is I use them as reference so it will may change and may alter the heights but on the whole it's just given me a guide so I don't need to slavishly follow um, what's in front of me so let's start with thinking about where I'm going to start so start in the middle ish and you'll see that these are quite transparent. So I found that you need to layer in order to get really strong colour from them. But that doesn't matter because all I'm doing is planning at the moment. So a light colour is fine. Let me change. I might do the light one. And looking at this, I can see actually the lightest colour here is the silver, not the iridescent white. So let's use that to just think about the shape I want to achieve. So this candle has burnt down a little bit and it has left some... wax at the side and some drips. This is why I have chosen this image because of the drips and I'm not going to completely follow where the drips are. I'm using them as a guide. And you can see there when I was putting it on it looked quite dull but as it dries so you have to be patient it starts to ping out and the colour starts to show through much stronger 
So this one goes here and it comes around there. I'm looking at the shapes I like and I want to bring out again. So. And as it's watercolour, I can also lift off, which I may do if I've gone in a little bit too strong. There's some areas, so let's put this one down here. So different lay levels, it's always useful for good composition. Okay. Now this has a lot of wax residue coming down here and I don't think I can see it all. I'm, I, if I spend a lot of time observing every little bit, it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to pull out areas I can see. So these are quite even and rounded drips. There's another one there. Okay. And as I'm working on black, I'm going to use this as the very darkest area. So the wick here is black. So I'm going to just go around it and not actually paint the black. So as I'm putting this on, it looks like I'm hardly putting anything on at all. And then as it dries, the colour comes through. So I do have to remember that. And this one bends over slightly. So the flames are all upright. The wicks may vary as they are, but the flames are all pretty much in the same direction because of airflow. So they will, if they're up, if there's air coming this way, they will all go that way, same that way. Maybe a bit of flickering, but I'm not that clever to be able to create flickering in this painting. Right, just going to take a drop of water and put a drop on each. I don't normally do this, but I do find the Cotman pans a little hard. Um, it's the way they're made. So these are baked in an oven and then cut into shape. And I sometimes find these type of pans, other than the ones that are poured, take a little bit more to lift off. So I might drop a little bit of water on. Don't always do it because it's affecting the pan. It's making it very wet and sticky. But because I know I'm going to be using all these colours, I want to be able to load my brush. And this is the brush you get with the set, nice little travel brush. I don't usually use small brushes, but for this, it works pretty well. Let me see what I can do here, because I think I've gone over a little bit. So really load my brush. Okay, that will do. Take that up there. I think that's planned, so I'm going to work my way down. I've got some lovely colours. I've got lovely blues, and looking at this reference, there's a blue area just at the bottom here. Blue across this edge here. These colours aren't going to be very strong, but as they dry, they are quite fun. 
fun. So this also has a bit of a red tint going up there. This copper, red copper it's called, it's a perfect colour. And again here. And the lightest area is just here. So let's choose the silver, which I know is the lightest colour. And I can keep adding, I can even take away until I find the right balance. Let's blend them in, bring them up a bit. Because this is watercolour. So I can Golden. Okay. See how those colours are quite subtle, actually. This is a little strong here, so just with a damp brush, I can soften that. The strongest area of light is up here. It's not as so strong here. Damp brush, and then come back with the silver. You can see the strength there. Now I've got a layer of colour on. You can see this; it's strengthening. And I'm going to tip this with a little bit of gold. It's quite interesting to put colour on and not actually see what it looks like until it started to dry. Okay. Let's move on to this one and do the same. So put some silver in the middle, push that colour up so it's not have hard lines. I chose these candles because they have quite a simple shape. And I, and I know I can use as much of the reference as I want or leave a lot out if I want and it will still work. So again, it's drying quite strongly down here. So let's just soften that a little bit, damp brush. Move on to this one while that's drying. So I need to let them dry before I work into them because then I can really see what I'm working with. Okay. Don't like that harsh outline, so let's just keep picking up the colour some more silver in the middle. Okay. Right, that line's a little harsh. Let's damp brush it. And I should be able to thin that, that's better. Right, let's have a look at these candles because I am, they're 3D, so I am getting some of the fullness of them. So I, I've got to create a 3D image by putting this line in. That goes right down to the lip. So let's bring that down. Okay, let's pick up some iridescent white. So for the candle part, I'm not actually going to over consider what colours I'm going to put in and you'll see I will just pick up a bit of colour because I think they all work really well together 
the moment I'm just getting myself satisfied with the shape. It may actually come up there a bit, that's fine. And let's put in some of these drips. So put one there. Let's have one dripping down here. Again here, actually. For this one, you're seeing more of the edge and not round the back. So, again, thin. So, got a shape here. A nice drip there. On here. It's got a nice row of drips here as well, so let's bring that down. Because the wax melts at the same consistency, these are quite even. Normally, you don't want to do even um, lines and things in a painting because it looks a little odd but the drips are even because the light is melting the candle is the flame I was trying to think of what it was is melting it at the same speed so it melts it drips it melts it drips let's have a look here and slight drip there It's fun, it's actually quite fun just to look at the shape that the drips are making. So this is a well used, it's been burning for a while, candle. Right, let me add a bit of colour on this. A bit of the blue, a bit of the bronze, a bit of bronze in here. I can still add more. All I just want to see is how it builds up. It has a slight pinky glow in here, so that's perfect for the bronze. And the same, let me use this colour on this side. Let's use the so I'm not overly thinking about the colours, just picking up a colour here and there. Blending them into each other. Let's put some blue in. For this it will be a case of building up layers, adding, blending. Okay. So let's go on to another one for now. Let that dry. I didn't think about this while I was doing it. I was more excited about getting onto the this candle and its drips that I'm going to have to put my hand across it, but that doesn't matter.
so slightly altering the original because this flame is a little over there, but it doesn't matter. Like I say, it's a reference. It's not necessarily slavishly following. You make it your own. And this is the great thing about being an artist. You, you make things your own or how you see them or what f feels works for you. that in a little bit. That's good. I'm going to use the blue. Right. Yes, you can see the back here, so that does go round, which means the wick comes down there. So, actually, didn't need to paint that area. This is part of this candle, no matter. We can bring that down. So some of these lines are just plotting out where everything is. I can move them. I can still work on them. It doesn't mean it's a fixed line. Because it, these colours do lift off really easily. A bit blue. Don't want it to be even as I've got it. So let me think about some of the drips on this side. So drip there. Nice. Go from there. These. So this candles needs to be defined a little bit more. Big mass of wax coming down here. And draw this out because by making these areas lighter it's going to push back any shadow in the candle so it is difficult painting white so these candles are white um, in a dark background there's not a lot of light so this is where you have to use your imagination a little bit and not make just a flat white colour. Some gold. Add a bit more 
more detail in here. Oh, good way to load your brushes to roll it in the pan. Yes, they're all silver at the moment, but I can add colour on top. This is got a few lines. That one is kind of a line inside. Put some more colour other than that silver. A bit of gold. Rolling my brush. bronze oh, that's nice so now I've got a layer on it's it's taken away that very blackness of the background and that means the colors can now start to become a little bit stronger Still using the black of the background for shadows, so some areas won't be as strong. You allow the black to shine through like you would do with the white. So white in watercolour, the white paper is part of the painting process. You either leave the white by retaining it using a resist or a masking fluid. You can do the same with the black or use it with these transparent colors to give more dimension. Right. You see there, it does lift off. A little bit of interest down this edge. And I want them to slightly fade as they get further down. So the lightest areas will be obviously the flame. And then it's lighting up the candle, but so as you get further away, things get duller. So I've only got a little brush, which is why I'm doing this quick movement, but it's also creating a kind of texture using the edge of the brush as well, because like I say, it is quite small. Just bring the colour down. Let's move on to these strips. So that's quite light there. See now how I can add a little bit more strength. Now I've got layers on. Okay. 
this needs to be stronger. Let's put some colour inside there. A bit of the blue. Colour in there. Need to bring the colour up to the drips so they're not isolated. That's better. Right, need that to dry before I see how strongly that is. Let's add drips to this candle. Nice one there. Um, see some red copper. That's actually my favourite colour, but I like strong colours. So needs a bit more blue. Bring those out. That's nice shapes here. Let's put some gold to start with this one. The brush. Um, blue. A bit of bronze. to take this area back a little. So damp brush. Lift off. So if I make things slightly darker, you see here, I actually haven't gone up to um, this area and that is making the light area stand out. I do need to maybe make sure I've got a little light here because the light will be casting light across the edges here. So let's get back in. It's gold. Gold at the tips. And some there we some white. No my brush. Need to have a look at this. 
smaller than a So we've got the pewter and the iridescent black. Pewter looks quite dark. So what I might do is just reshape with the pewter. Because I like the angle that the wicks are. It's just a little bit more interesting than having them straight up so let's just angle them I can see there there's a little gap So let me continue and work my way down till I'm happy. Dark in the middle. Let me put some gold on the edge here. still just there mm, bit of bronze you can see as I keep touching it now it is starting to lift But I will use that just to highlight and push forward this candle in the foreground again. I think this needs to be darker here. Just add a little bit of colour into these, just so they're not flat. and he'll be here. Put some gold in there. I do find it a little more difficult to get a very flat finish with this small brush. Right, so this needs to be lighter because that is definitely where the light is picking up. Oh, that's better, it looks a lot thicker. The same here, and it's right. let's go on to this one. I quite like see it. Just put colour, any colour I wanted, just put it on. See how that's 
worked. So looking at the interesting shapes. Thinking a little about where it would be lightest, definitely along the edges, because that's where closest to the flame. Just lighten that, just clean water. Give it a little bit more tonal value. Same here, I think that does need to go still a little bit darker. I'm going to let that dry and then I can do any little areas because I think it still needs a little bit of colour but in the meantime I'm just going to get a little bit of colour around the flames because they are the area which is creating the most light and that's the whole point of a candle is creating light and they're not just a flat light. They will throw light across the surrounding area. So just wetting. It's drying quite quickly. Hopefully it'll be wet enough for me to do a vignette. And a vignette is a soft background. You can see there, even by just wetting the paper, how making things darker around a light area really throws it forward. Don't like that bit there, but I'll work on that. The biggest tip I can give you is to walk away and I need to remind myself to do that a lot more because you get, when you're doing the same painting over a period of time, even after an hour, walk away, come back and when you come back with fresh eyes, it's amazing how your perspective changes and bits you thought weren't working or you're really unhappy with, instead of trying to fix there and then, leave them, walk away, especially with a watercolour, you can fix it by lifting it or altering it um, or thinking of another way. And acrylics and all was again, you can go over it. But you, the different perspective, you kind of go, oh, actually that doesn't need fixing. Now it's dried. Or if I do this, this works. So the biggest tip I can give you is to walk away. Have fresh eyes. Right, let's have a bit of gold. Bit of the silver. So you can't actually see this until it starts to dry. Iridescent white.
bronze, or red copper, sorry. Picking up some of the colour from the flame, which I think is a little bit harsh. I'll just soften that a little bit. Same on this, I want to soften that edge. I'm using this swirly motion because hopefully it will give a diffused effect. What you may not see until I tip it is the sparkle that you will also get. Oh, we can see a bit of it. Can you? Yeah. Just diffusing that a little bit. I like this red copper, so let's put some of that in. Remembering to attach your background to the candles and not have a halo around because they're all part of the same area. I can't see until this dries. Right, I'll let that dry because there's probably areas I will need to just work on. Let me put in some final touches, a little bit of work in this candle, but let's just see how strongly I can go in now on this final layer. I am using the silver, it's the strongest. Colour on the black. Blue. Like blue over here. Let's see if I can just lighten some of these areas. Just making that a little bit more solid. Okay. And here, use some of this. back a little bit. I don't need to let it dry because all it seems to be doing is moving the light around. Right, let's finish you off. Gold, I think. It's 
have a look. I think gold actually is the most sparkly. So I'm using that as the light catcher, I suppose. That's worked. I don't need to work too much into that. Just fix this light because it's kind of disappeared. You know what? I'm actually going to move it because it's in the wrong place. It's making things hard. It'll take a couple of minutes. And it just shows how easy it is to lift these bronzes. So, because I'm moving that, I'm just going to bring this candle down there. I'm going to move this right over there. just so I have a gap between. Between this candle and this flame because it got lost. And then I think I'm going to leave it. Let's have that. I need to straighten it up. Because like I said, they are... Oh no, I quite like that. I actually quite like it is going at a slightly different angle. So there's a breeze around. What did I do? Bit of blue at the bottom here, where the flame is touching the wick. Bit of the red copper further up the flame. Gold at the top. Silver in the middle where it's light. So I'm going to add a drip going that way. Is that interesting? out a little bit and oh, let's try and put a wick in actually it went that way didn't it so using that lift off technique that back and do the same over here and the same here so final touches I'm just going to strengthen this can this flame and then I'm done the 
this over. Back in with the red. a bit fat but let's take that back by diffusing it in Definitely happier with with that. See how much stronger I can go in once it's dried. So I think I will need to leave that to dry just to able to go back in but much happier with that now I'm going to leave it so there you go three candles using the Cotman metallic pocket set um, on black watercolor paper so I hope you enjoyed that and join me again next week for another live demonstration <laughs>